TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, if we do go live and you happen to miss it, this is the channel where it will be. Um, don't forget, we do got the Patreon as well. We're voting for a new show right now. We also started another show, Fresh Meat. It's busting over there, man. And don't forget, we do got the Discord. Just drop your request in there. This is how one of Europe's deadliest drug gangs inf infiltrated the world of boxing by Vice. It's only nine minutes. I feel like this could be longer. Nevertheless, let's get <laughs> the scene of the latest Hutch Kinahan feud gun attack. I remember that, the shootout. Two years since this feud erupted in the capital, it's every bit as dangerous and frightening. February 2016. It's early afternoon and the weigh in before a boxing tournament at the Regency Hotel in Dublin. Fighters, managers, members of the media, and the public are milling around. All of a sudden, the sound of shots. Two men stormed the hotel lobby, wearing mock Irish police uniforms and blasting AK-47s. For someone to be shot dead in a boxing weigh-in, you know, was remarkable. He was spotted by the three armed people who were dressed as Gardaí, and they shot him there and then. It was a chaotic but carefully orchestrated attack that left one dead and fell short of its intended target, Daniel Kinahan, the day-to-day -day head of the Kinahan cartel, a criminal syndicate set up by his father in the late 1990s, which is now one of the largest in the world. It's a never-ending page-turner, this story, really. Daniel has overseen the family operation from a Dublin drug-dealing gang to a globe-spanning operation, now thought to be worth 1 billion euros. The Regency shooting was not simply an eruption of violence from Dublin's criminal underworld. It revealed the extent to which it had spread, well beyond Ireland and especially into the world of boxing. Welcome to the business of crime. In this episode, we're looking at how an Irish crime syndicate has escaped authorities for decades and how its boss became one of the most influential figures in British boxing. The Kinahan Cartel. I know all about the Kinahan Cartel Tell and all of that. But, uh, the boxing side of it, just because of that, where it happened, I kind of knew, but like I never knew in full depth. It's always been a family affair. Daniel Kinahan's father, Christopher, better known as Christy, was a notorious Irish drug dealer who earned the nickname the Dapper Don. Christy Kinahan was caught very quickly as he moved into the heroin game and caught with a significant amount of drugs at that time. Despite arrests and stints in jail, Kinahan was able to enlarge and expand his operations offshore with the help of his two sons, Christopher Jr. and Daniel. By 2010, the so-called Kinahan Organized Crime Group was based in Marbella in southern Spain. They are the most significant suppliers of drugs to Europe. They were dealing directly with the South Americans they were buying from, and they had control of the route into Europe through Africa. Yet so far, all have evaded justice. After when you got control of routes, routes and ports and stuff like that, you're going to be big, allegedly. After a multi-year police investigation, Spanish police moved against Kinahan and his associates in May 2010, an operation involving some 700 officers in five countries. Europol coordinated a strike against them called Operation Shovel, and that really put them kind of on the world stage for the first time. Up until then, we were talking about a, a local group of Irish drug dealers who'd made their way out to Spain. More than 30 arrests were made, plus several seizures as properties were raided. But allegedly, the Kinnahans had been tipped off. The Kinnahans had been bribing some local cops and had possibly got a tip off. Of course. They got an unlimited amount of money. Of course they got people working inside you know what i'm saying of course they got like double agents that these raids were coming and one way or another they got bail within two years they were back in business bigger more powerful than ever so-called operation shovel only came to a handful of minor charges but none for the top Kinahan trio. Daniel Kinahan still has no convictions at all. That's even after his former right-hand man, Gary Hutch, was shot dead near Marbella in 2015 after a falling out. 
Two further killings as the attempt by the Kinahan crime cartel to wipe out the Hutch family continues. The attack on the region. Damn, they was letting it go. I don't think I've ever seen like live footage though. Agency Hotel a few months later was immediately understood to have been a bid for revenge for Hutch's murder. The Kinahan Hutch feud continued to escalate, amassing a body count to rival the most bloody gang conflicts in Ireland's history. While some key figures of the cartel have been taken off the streets, Daniel Kinahan continues to operate in plain sight. Not only that, he has raised his public profile, becoming a major player in the world of pro boxing. Daniel Kinahan had stayed in the background. He would probably be very safe now. He'd be in a very powerful position. After moving to Marbella, Daniel Kinahan set up a boxing gym called MGM with pro boxer Matthew Macklin. With top-of-the-line training facilities and good financial terms of management, MGM gained a reputation as a credible base, becoming home to world champions Liam Smith and Billy Joe Saunders. You know, I took a lot of advice and a very good personal friend of mine, Daniel. Drugs pay better than fights, so most likely it's... I feel like for the most part, like, I, I've heard all of this before. It's the veneer of legitimacy and even the public respect that drew Kinahan to boxing. I don't think that uh, making money out of boxing was the prime motivation. It was laundering Luck Kinahan's reputation. You know, it was the definitive example of sports washing, that he wanted to be seen as a guy who'd taken over boxing and the guy who cleaned up boxing, which is very ironic given who he is and, you know, the fact he comes from a very dirty trade. In August 2014, boxer Jamie Moore was shot at Kinahan's home in what was thought to be a botched attack on Kinahan. Moore survived. What I mean about scary is being, being laid on the floor, bleeding to death, thinking I'm never going to see my fucking wife and kids again. Not long afterwards, a Kinahan associate was gunned down in an Irish bar in Marbella. That intensified scrutiny on Daniel Kinahan and MGM. And in 2017, he stepped down from the company. MGM rebranded as M. Wasn't the lady, has some lady picked up as well? Like, and then they got her out of there too? TK and got a new boss, blaming bad publicity. Okay, the initials have had to change. The name of the company has had to change, but it's a. Uh... Everyone, everyone knows that that's the same. We're the same people that were behind the MGM. But Kinahan remained deeply involved in the sport, becoming personal advisor to world heavyweight champion Tyson Fury. Less than a year after the newly rebranded MTK cut ties with Kinahan, Fury signed with the company. And when in 2020, the boxing world went wild over the news that Fury would finally be facing Anthony Joshua, Kinahan was credited as having got it over the line. Hello there. I'm just after getting off the phone with Daniel Kinahan. Uh, he just informed me that the biggest fight in British boxing history has just been agreed. <laughs> Get up there, my boy! MTK became one of the biggest boxing management companies in Europe until it disbanded in 2022. Somebody always trying to tell me something about Tyson Fury. I'm like, bro, I'm too, in, I'm too, I'm too deep and British and Gypsy and all the culture over there, like you're not gonna tell me somebody from the USA gonna beat him. I don't care what, Deontay Wilder, salute, I love your story. Don't get in the ring with that man again. It's not even gonna be, you know what I'm saying? You gotta get, you gotta hit him square on, knock him down three times in one round to win because it ain't, other than that, you're not gonna beat him ever. <laughs> I don't see Tyson Fury. Has Tyson Fury ever... Hey, Siri. What's Tyson Fury's boxing record? Here's an answer from us.com. The 33-year-old currently has an undefeated record, standing at 31 and 31 0 I don't see him losing. He got one draw. I don't see A boxing promotion company with links to Daniel... Not, not the way the gypsies be fighting. Like, I just don't see it. <laughs> Kinahan has announced its to cease operations at the end of the month. But somebody like Kinahan should never have been involved in the sport, should never have been involved in any sport. The thing is, it's only boxing that probably would have allowed it to happen, and that's an indictment of boxing. The official line from Daniel Kinahan's lawyers is that he has no criminal record or convictions, and that wild allegations about him being a mob boss are without basis.
But after decades of investigations and dozens of deaths, authorities might finally be closing in on the Kinahan cartel. They're wanted, and it's a They're case not. of the clock is... They're not. Let me see, the Kinahan cartel. You know what I'm saying? Even if the government does close in on that cartel, you know what's going to happen? There'll be a power struggle. There'll be a, a deep, deep power struggle. Because, you know, somebody's going to want that territory. Somebody's going to want that money. And they might end up even worse off than they were before. Sticking for them. The Thomas Bomber Kavanaugh was jailed for 21 years for his role in a plot to import drugs worth 36 million euros. This is three offenses in total. Conspiring to import and supply Class A and controlled drugs. Conspiring to import and supply firearms and ammunition and money laundering. And in April 2022, the U.S. placed sanctions on the cartel. The United States Department of State is pleased to announce a reward of up to $5 million for information leading to the financial disruption of the KTCO or the arrest and convictions of its leaders. And just this September, Johnny Morrissey was arrested in Spain after being publicly named by the U.S. Treasury as an alleged money launderer and a key member of the cartel. The boxing world has felt- Somebody got that five million up out of there. Well, in Spain, they was not, he here? Don't he money launder, don't he launder money for them? Give me my five. The impact too, with US authorities warning that anyone still involved with Kinahan needs to cut ties or risk being implicated in its investigation. It wouldn't there. surprise me at all if, if when the, the authorities do move for them, they end up going on trial in America rather than Ireland or the UK or Spain. Like it might well be the Americans who bring them to justice. They are currently based in the United Arab Emirates, which lacks an extradition treaty with the US. Authorities are biding their time, but all will be hoping this will be their last round in the ring with the Kinahan cartel. Yeah, the other leave a like, comment, I'm gone. Don't forget to check the description, the link tree. See if you uh, participate in anything down there.